Hello everyone, welcome to the mini genetics review part two. As I just went over, homologs are matching chromosomes. A gene is a little part of a chromosome that codes for a particular genetic trait like eye color or hair color or whether or not you have dimples. And just like chromosomes come in pairs, genes come in matching pairs and we call the matching genes alleles. So let's look at some new vocabulary. Okay, the what we're going to be looking at are these vocabulary pairs, genotype and phenotype, heterozygous and homozygous, the law of dominance, and dominant and recessive. So let's start with genotype and phenotype. An organism's genotype is its genetic makeup. It's what genes it actually has. An organism's phenotype is its appearance. What does it look like? Does it have curly hair? Does it have three antennae? Does it have purple eyes? So an organism's phenotype is its appearance. All right, now that we have those down, let's go with homozygous and heterozygous. Hetero means different. This prefix means different. Homo means alike or the same. Heterozygous means the alleles are alike. Homozygous means, oh man, I messed that up. Homozygous, sorry, means the alleles are alike. Heterozygous means the alleles are different. I guess I'm supposed to say as a teacher, oh, I'm just testing you. So homozygous means the alleles are alike. Heterozygous means the alleles are different. All right. All right. Um, just looking, well, we'll just keep going on. So we have that and that, and then we have the law of dominance. The law of dominance says in the heterozygous condition, one allele is expressed while the other is not. And I will show you examples of this. All right, the allele that's always expressed, you get tired of this little, <laughs> the allele that's always expressed is called dominant. And the allele that's only expressed when there's two of them is called recessive. All right, so I think it helps to apply um, these vocabulary to some actual situations. So let's look at some human genes. All right, there are two common alleles for eye color in humans. The gene, the piece of DNA that codes for brown eyes, is dominant over the gene, um, that piece of DNA that codes for blue eyes. Um, the allele for dimples is dominant over the allele for no dimples. The gene that codes for freckles is dominant over the corresponding gene that codes for no freckles. Notice that all the dominant genes are written as a capital letter. All of the recessive genes are written as lowercase letters. And when I do genetic problems, I like to underline little f's and little m's just so they're easily to distinguish between the capital ones. To go on, do any of you get migraine headaches? Because not everybody can get migraine headaches. You have to have the gene that codes for the ability to get migraine headaches. So you can thank either mom or dad for giving you the dominant gene that codes for the ability to get migraine headaches. And because it's dominant, you only need one of them. And unfortunately, the gene for nearsightedness in humans is dominant over the gene for normal vision. All right, so let's, let's um, apply these words to a situation. This represents a pair of homologs um, I don't, I forget what pair, human pair chromosomes carry the gene for eye color, but here's a pair of homologs and let's say right here, they got a gene for brown eyes from one parent and on the matching chromosome, they got a gene for brown eyes from the other parent. Now here's individual number two. Now basically, okay, I said by 151 students, these could represent any one of you listening um, to this lecture, and we will count green eyes and stuff as a modification of blue. All right, so some of you got a dominant gene for eye color from one parent and a recessive gene from eye, for eye color from another parent. And some of you, well, both parents gave you a recessive gene for eye color. So let's look at student A here. Can you use the vocabulary words I just went over to describe their genotype? All right, the appropriate vocabulary words would be homozygous. Homozygous means the alleles are the same and they're both dominant. Now, notice I've just told you about the genetic makeup of the student. I have not actually told you what color eyes he or she has. All I'm saying is that 
this is their coding. These are the genes they have in every cell of their body. The phenotype is their actual appearance. So can you predict what color eyes this person would have? Well, I think it's a pretty easy guess because all they have is coding for brown eyes. They should have brown eyes. That should be their phenotype or appearance. Okay, person number two, what would their genotype be? We would describe their genotype as heterozygous because hetero, we don't have to say heterozygous dominant because heterozygous means they have one dominant gene and one recessive gene for that trait. And because brown is dominant over blue, they would have brown eyes thanks to the law of dominance. All right, the law of dominance says in the heterozygous condition, one allele is expressed, that's brown eyes, while the other is not. So you don't normally see people walking around with one brown eye and one blue eye. And if you do, you can just tell them they're a genetic freak because obviously they, their body did not read the biology book. All right, just kidding. All right, what about this third person? Can you do the third person? How would we describe their genotype, their genetic makeup? Well, this third person would be homozygous recessive. And their phenotype, what would they look like with respect to eye color? You would predict they would have blue eyes, okay? So there's a, um, I hope this clarifies the vocabulary that you will need to understand to understand my Hardy Weinberg lecture. A couple more of the stories. Um, if someone shows the recessive trait, so this person here is actually showing the recessive trait, blue eyes. If they show the recessive trait, you automatically know their genetic makeup. You automatically know their genotype because only a person with the genotype, the genetic makeup of homozygous recessive, they will only, only, only show the phenotype of blue eyes. All right, so this applies to any recessive trait, whether it's white skin or blue eyes or straight hair. If someone shows the recessive trait, you automatically know their genetic makeup. They have to be homozygous recessive. However, if someone shows the dominant trait, in this example, brown eyes, you can know their phenotype, you can know they have brown eyes, but you do not know their genotype just by looking at them. If someone has brown eyes, their genotype, their genetic makeup might be homozygous dominant, but it might be heterozygous. You have no way of knowing without examining possibly their parents and possibly their offspring, all right? So again, these terms and concepts are very important to understand the Hardy-Weinberg problems that you're gonna to have to do. And if you have any questions, feel free to post it in chat or come to my office hours. I'll see you in the next.